In this week's update from IHME on the COVID epidemic, uh, we see around the world uh, that the Delta surges that have been dominating um, what's happening to COVID pretty much everywhere so far except South America, that we've seen a number of epidemics peak. Uh, and those peaks are occurring in quite widespread regions. So a number of US states, Arkansas, Missouri, Louisiana, Florida, Nevada have peaked. We've seen similar peaks in previous weeks in Europe, uh, and we've seen some new ones. We've seen peaks in the epidemics, uh, fortunately, uh, in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, Cambodia, um, and Malaysia, as, as other examples where it appears that uh, the, the surges are peaking. So that's probably the most important uh, observation. There's a cautionary tale, however, uh, in what's been happening in Scotland, because Scotland did peak in, uh, in, um, and came down by about 60%, and now in the last eight to 10 days has had another uh, rather rapid surge. And I think what this is telling us is that with Delta being so transmissible, relatively small differences in behavior uh, account for you know, transmission going down or transmission increasing rather rapidly. And as we head into the season in many countries when uh, children are going back to school, there's a particular issue around how much the Delta variant will be fueled by children's return to school and what we're seeing in Scotland might it unfold in other countries as well. Uh, so we'll want to watch very carefully the, what's happening. Other things that uh, emerge from the data, of course, is that some places where there's a huge population of susceptibles, like Australia, because they haven't had much in the way of any transmission in the past, and have not yet been able to vaccinate a substantial fraction of the population, uh, we're seeing you know, continued very rapid increases in transmission despite lockdown in the two affected provinces. And I think this again is indicative just of how much more transmissible the Delta variant is and that strategies that worked well in the previous variants may need to be um, stronger if you want to actually contain transmission through mask use and social distancing. Uh, New Zealand is trying more stringent lockdowns than Australia as they've now got community transmission. And so we have a sort of natural experiment running as to whether those will work in New Zealand compared to the somewhat less restrictive lockdowns in, in Australia. Uh, elsewhere, I think, you know, monitoring what we're seeing on first dose vaccination, because that's very indicative of where we'll get to in full vaccination within 30 to 90 days, depending on the vaccine schedule in each country. There's uh, a, a more progress in some low and middle income countries than I think many people appreciate. Uh, Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, the southern states of Brazil are coming up to levels of first dose vaccination commensurate with many US states or higher. We have quite high levels of first dose vaccination in Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Mongolia. And so we're seeing some LMICs catching up to the high levels seen in Western Europe uh, and, and many parts of North America. You know, we just don't really know what it's gonna do. Uh, I mean, the only mechanism that's gonna have an effect is through um, more employers feeling like they can mandate vaccination. So that could be the vehicle by which we see an impact of the, of the Pfizer uh, approval uh, by the FDA. Uh, normal use approval. So, but are there that many of the hesitant that on their own rights are going to be swayed by that? It's unclear. So the story, as mentioned last week, also that we will uh, will have a substantial effect on what comes in the next few weeks is Delta arriving in Brazil. We're seeing some Delta-related increases, we believe, in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, a couple of other states in Brazil. And the sort of unknown factor for us all is what's the impact of having been previously infected with P1 and how much protection, or the, 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 the gamma variant, uh, how much does that 
give you against the Delta variant. So that will be another important factor on how bad will the Delta surges be in South America, we believe. Last, just a reminder that our models, uh, which suggest that by the end of uh, November, by December 1st, 35% of the world will be fully vaccinated and about half of the world will have some uh, effective immunity against the Delta variant through past infection and or vaccination. Uh, these models do not take into account uh, waning immunity, waning immunity from natural infection or, and waning immunity from vaccination. So in many reg regards, especially as we look farther into the future, uh, we, our models are probably optimistic Put it another way, with 50% of the world at least, and maybe more uh, susceptible to Delta on December 1st, we should expect a lot of ongoing COVID-19 Delta transmission in 2022. And of course, if a new variant comes along, uh, that would be even larger than uh, the, the current views would suggest. So that's the main findings from uh, our analysis this week.